So if you're using a CRM and you have flags or tags, depending on what your CRM is calling them, you might be wondering the best use of these things. Well, frankly, I have always used them to be able to identify my hottest business. And so in this video, we're gonna talk about how to use your tags and your flags or both and how and what kind of flags you wanna to add to your CRM. So let's get started. All right, so now I get asked this all the time too. How do you use your flags and your tags? Because almost all of our systems have some sort of flagging ability. And so now we know we have a contact type, we have a status, and we have a source. So we're not going to use a flag for these three things. Got it? So I use flags for um, different things. This is what I'm using flags for. Action. That's my action. What do they want? conversation status, drip campaigns that I put them on, hotness levels. I could think of a few other things, but for right now, these are like the major things. So action. So I would have a flag and I'm going to actually show you my flags when we get into my account, when the live action ones, but I would have flags that have these little things. And if you actually start the flag name with the word action, <laughs> they'll all be in there alphabetically, maybe. I, I don't know 100% how your system's set up, but it might be. So if it starts with action, then you can uh, just fly over to the action area. They're all stacked up in a row and just pick out the one you want. Instead of being all over in this list, you can't find it. So this would be just something that occurred with me in an attempt to try to contact them, okay? This will tell me a lot. This I also don't need to necessarily put into a note if I add a flag because there's nothing, I didn't really get much. If I got spoke, I could run a search in my database for everyone I ever spoke to and hopefully I got notes in there. And that's the key, you have to put your notes in there. Okay, next thing is what is it they want? So this is just a little teeny list, but I mean, put in your neck of the woods, the kind of things that are most important, you know, of the things you think that most people are gonna want. So a lot of the reason we use the flags, I like doing these because at a glance, without me having to dig through the notes, because the notes can get long when emails and text start sending, I can easily then identify what is it that I want, you know, that's going on with this person without me having to, you know, have to dig all around. And on top of that, if I have a listing, I can do some reverse prospecting too. And they told me they wanted a three car garage and gated and I just saw it because I showed a home to somebody and, and that guy didn't want it. So I wanna go back to my computer and run a search for everyone who told me what they wanted. And if they want a three car garage in a gated community, I'm gonna run it by them and see if this is a possibility, right? So great way to do it. By the way, there's nothing better than doing what I just said, reverse prospecting. And that is it, you're out showing homes or you've been in a house and it's amazing. Your person doesn't want it or maybe your new listing, obviously. You need to get to your list and tell the world about it, okay? Put it on YouTube, send it in an email to everybody, okay? Conversation status. So I actually have in mind um, anything related to the phone or the email, I would start it with phone and then that way it's all lining up there and anything related. So if they opted out of text, right? Or the, the text number, the number was bad or whatever. So I can do that. And then the drip campaigns. Again, this is just for your own knowledge at a glance. You can just say they're on this campaign. I also have a tag that says their campaign's been shut off. It's over. So when the campaign's over, it just automatically adds this thing that says campaign over. So if I, if I need to go identify people that aren't on a campaign, I can easily go in and run that search. So that's good. And then hotness levels. So this is all dependent on what you like, but I'm going to tell you my opinion is don't use time-based hotness levels. If you do something like one to three months or six to nine months, personally, those get obsolete. And I like hot, cold, warm. As long as you're going in there and changing the statuses along the way. Um, I know the Buffini people, they have ABCDs and stuff like that. So make sure that you are taking advantage of using hotness levels for yourself if you can. For me, the hot, cold, warm, hot can be like red, green, yellow, like it's kind of like a uh, stoplight, right? So I like that. And if you can put tags and put colors on it, it helps you out too, okay? So you can have all, as many flags as you want added to a contact. And that way you can all use all this stuff that I'm telling you to run a search easily for, okay? 